everybody. Good evening, welcome. So we are going to wait a few minutes to, to let the other people join our event and then we will start. Okay, there are a lot of people who are joining us. Okay. Okay, let's wait maybe two more minutes to to help the other people, okay, to, to get in, in fact, other people are joining us. Welcome everybody. My name is Julia. And then right after when everybody will be logged in, I will introduce myself and I will tell you a little bit more about me. Okay, I can see a lot of people from different places all around the world, which is great, actually. <laughs> okay, then, so I think that we can start our webinar, our meeting together, and well, it somebody will join us later, we can just uh, welcome them and then go continue our, our meeting. Okay, so let me share my, my screen with you and let's start this, this experience, this trend, this trend report. Okay, here we are. So, welcome everybody. My name is Giulia Bongiovanni and I will be your host for tonight's event. Okay, so first of all, let me introduce myself. I, am, I would like to define myself as a fashion expert because I had the chance to work in different fields of the fashion world. I have a fashion design and clothing construction degree with a trend forecasting final thesis. So my entire um, experience as a fashion expert uh, have been focused on trends, on trend forecasting, trend analysis and more. I have developed almost 10 years of career in different fields of the fashion world. I also had the chance to travel around the world because of my job. I spent a month in Vietnam in 2017. I also had the chance to teach into universities here in Florence. So I have experienced many roles in the fashion world. I am specialized in trend research and analysis. I also develop collection for some private clients and I am also a fashion stylist. I am an image consultant. I can help you reorganize your wardrobe because I am a specialist in this and I'm also a personal shopper. So, why are we here today? We are here today because we all have a common passion for the world of fashion. And we are here to analyze and also to discover what is new and how to be ready 
for the next season, the spring summer 2022 season. So here is just an overview of, of the season, uh, which were the highlights of the season, and we are going to talk more about them later. Okay, there are more people that are joining us. Okay, perfect. So let's talk about the main reason why we are here today. We are here to talk about the new spring summer 2022 season. But first of all, I want to uh, introduce you to the world of passion trends. So what is a trend? The, the first question that I, I, that I have to, to explain you is what is a trend? In fashion, trends are defined as a series of aesthetic inputs that evolves with time, social changes, cultures, and many other factors. Trends can be defined as such when a consistent number of people adopt them. And at the same time, when they can be seen in different places all over the world at the same time. So this is where a trend can be actually called a trend. Okay, uh, before going back to, to, to the second part of this small theoretical explanation, uh, I would like to, to ask to some of you, if you can name one trend of 2021. It is not uh, a wrong or right answer, but I'm just, um, I just want to, to talk with you, to interact with you. And I also would like to, to know if you can name one, one trend of 2021. You can also uh, write it down if you don't want to unmute your microphone. We just have, I'm just curious to you know uh, if, you, if you know or if you can name one trend of 2021. Okay, there's, okay, sustainability, right? Sustainability, luckily, has been one of the most chatted trend of 2021. It finally become one of the main uh, factor of some collections. It can be, yes, in sustainability can be defined as a trend because we can see we can read about sustainability um, all around the world. And then we can also read about, we can see, we can, we can read about sustainability also on fashion, on, on social media, which are uh, the, one of the first places where trend can be seen. Luckily, we have, we, uh, right now we have the chance to share our thoughts. We have also the chance to share our um, passions and everything that is, everything is pretty immediate. So thanks God we have social media for trend forecaster, for trend forecasters, uh, social media are a very important tool. But let's go on. So here below, I'm showing you a simple graph that illustrates you the trend's duration through time. We can, uh, we can separate trends um, according their duration through times in three main typologies. We have Fed, which are um, short-term trends. We have Medium, trend, medium term trends, which are actually called trends. And then we have the long term trends that are called classics. And here below, I will show you some examples of uh, what these kind of trends are. Okay, so FAD are actually the shortest life, have the shortest life duration. So what it means, it means that they have a very rapid growth, but at the same time, they also have a very rapid decline because um, they become famous 
in a in a pretty short time but at the same time they goes out of fashion at the same fast time so here are some examples of what i'm talking about i'm sure uh, a high percentage of you have this kind of phone charm uh, du during the, this summer and i'm pretty sure that in six months uh, some of you will will just leave these uh, these super fast trends okay so let's go on with the medium term i'm sorry I, i'm sorry i, I have to Okay. okay then can you can you okay then can you hear me now Let let me let me fix. I'm so sorry, everybody. My dog was. She's always present there. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, she's nice, but she's also very enthusiastic, too much enthusiastic. Okay, but let's get back to, to our meeting, to our webinar. Okay, then. Uh, so I was talking about medium term trends and um, medium trend ter medium term trends are the one who maybe that maybe need a little more time to be accepted by the masses but they also have a longer um, cycle of life so these are um, a super huge example uh, these are the square to uh, heels introduced by daniel lee which is the head designer of Bottega Veneta in 2018. But the masses, which means us, we took a little bit more time to accept it. And in less than six months, it, they become one of the most war uh, shoes, also by influencers, by models. They also got reinterpreted by other brands. And I'm sure that some of you already have a similar model, maybe not this Bottega Veneta model, but a similar model inside their own wardrobe. I actually do, because I, uh, I already have one of these uh, particular shape to uh, shoes. Um, well, we just have to think that maybe uh, 10 years ago, we would never wear this kind of shoes because we were used to, I don't know if you remember, but we were used to uh, super rounded heels with platform and super um, high heels. So we weren't used to uh, unplatformed heels with super squared um, toe. We, we were actually used to something totally, totally different. So a trend, it is something that maybe needs a little bit more time to be accepted by the masses, but uh, the duration goes between five and 10 years. I'm sure that maybe in 10 years, we will not wear this kind of shoes because another model will be trendy, but at the same time, this, the same thing happened with this model of shoes. And then we have the last one, which is the long-term trends, which are the classics, the timeless pieces. Uh, here are some examples like the Birkin by Hermes, which is a model that have never been changed. Obviously it got reinterpreted by uh, the deep, through the time. So with different colors, with different materials, but the model, the, 
the basis model never changed through the time. And this is just an example. I can give you another example, which is the trench from Burberry. Um, the Burberry trench has um, even a longer story than the Birkin by Hermes. It is something that uh, was um, were by, uh, by people also during the 19th century. So uh, it kind of never changed. Obviously, all the designer maybe changed the color or changed the material, the same like Birkin, but the, the base, the underlying base model is always the same. So this is what a classic is. It is something that never ever change. Okay, let's go on with some a little some questions for you. I am here with three different models of product, and I would like to to ask you, uh, what do you think these kind of uh, products we are talking about? I mean. What do you think uh, about 2.55, the, the most known and the most, uh, the most wanted bags from, from Chanel? What do you think it is? Do you think it is a fat, so a short, a medium, or a long-term trend, or in this case, product? Yes, right. Yes, it is a classic, right? You are totally right, because, um, Coco Chanel created this uh, super innovative bag in 1955. That's why this, this bag is called 2.55 because she developed the idea on February, which is the two, in 1955, which is the 0.55. And only uh, Karl Lagerfeld uh, in 1983 changed something and, and developed the, the actual 2.55 bag. But uh, from 1983, it never got changed. Obviously, uh, there are different colors and materials, but uh, the underlying model is always the same. Okay, so right answer. What about instead this super platform heel by Christian Louboutin? What do you think it is? It is a medium, a short, or a long-term uh, trend? Okay, medium term, short to high. Okay, this was a medium term trend because uh, platform heels were the most wanted uh, model of shoes for almost 10 years. It, it, it started in 2000, 2005 and it kind of ended after 2012. So this was uh, a super wanted model also, um, yes, also for, for more than 10 years. Okay, so the last one. What do you think about this mini bag by Jacqueline? This is a pretty tough question. There is no right or wrong answer in this case, and then I will tell you why. Okay, so it's so hard to say, but I would say medium. Okay, uh, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, this is actually a medium term trend because it was a pretty new bag because this bag was released by Jacques Inou, uh four years ago, three or four years ago. So actually, yes, it is not already a classic, but maybe if this bag will last, will be uh, a trendy bag for more than 20 years, maybe it has the chance to become a classic, just like uh, a Dior lady bag, a lady Dior bag, or uh, just like the Chanel 2.5. Maybe this will be the classic from Jacques Mew. Yes, you're right. Let's see if we're still using in 2014. Yes, right, that's exactly what I was talking about. Uh, only the time will tell us if this bag will be a classic or just a fad, or just, um, I'm sorry, a medium trend. 
So maybe something that will last from 10 to 15 years maximum. Yes, you're right. Perfect. You perfectly got the questions. Okay, then. So let's go on and let's talk about the main reason why we are here. So the spring summer 2022 co uh, collections. Okay, so let's talk first of all about the mood of this season. Because after almost two years of restrictions, designers have expressed the willing, taken directly from the masses, of re-going out, re-celebrate, restart living, a new sort of normality. I would call it a new, new life, a normality 2.0. And this feeling of freedom has been clearly seen on collections. Um, let's see that after what we also we all have been through, we have this willing to re going out. We want to go out. We also want that to the people. We want to people to look at us. We want people to look at our our, our outfit. We want people also. We want human connections. So, what's the best way to make people look at you? by wearing something totally uh, unexpected. And that's what a lot of designers have tried to do uh, during this brand new season. Okay, uh, due to this post-pandemic new phase of, of our life, designers have expressed this new uh, willing of, of a new kind of life in two different ways. We have rediscovered the importance of the connection with the nature. So we can see them uh, right later. I will show you that. Um, so a lot of designers have rediscovered the connection with the nature and took some of the shades of their collection directly from there. On the other side, we have super solid color. So this willing of party, this willing of refound freedom has been translated in super solid color, in colorful immersions in colors. So then I will show you in detail. Okay, so the first part that I was talking to you uh, was actually this one. Um, a lot of designers have taken their inspiration by the connection with nature. And they have developed their own collection using some shades taken from Mother Nature. Well, you can take a look at Sportmax, for example, which is a pretty urban sporty brand. It is the, the sporty side of the Maxmara group. And you can see that the colors are um, natural, are something really uh, calm. It is not something very um, colorful. So the shades are taken directly from the nature. The same thing with the squares. We all know the squares like uh, a brand, a sexy brand, um, something always related to the sensual world. But in this case, they took their own inspiration, the color inspiration directly from the nature. On the other side, we can find super solid colors. So, uh, this willing to party, to celebrate something uh, is clearly seen by these, uh, these colors. You can see Giorgio Armani, which is the king of elegance, which is the king of minimalism, decided to use super solid color like electric blue, fuchsia. So um, it kind of tells us that there's this willing of finally uh, refound uh, a, a new sense of freedom. You can see the same thing also in Prenza Schuller, which is a brand that usually has known 
for its um, minimalism and also for uh, some super uh, rigid colors. In this case, they took the chance to celebrate and, uh, and use this super solid color. Another way to uh, express this new way of um, rejoining life has been through these optical effects. Uh, I'm sure that you, we will see a lot of these um, pop art optical effects uh, on, our, on our wardrobe and on social media during the, the next season. As you can see, obviously every designer, every brand have interpreted these new optical effects uh, in their own way, but we can find uh, this black and white um, color mode uh, applied to, to, the, to, to the different styles, obviously, of the designers. Another color found on runways have been these light shade of yellow. Obviously, you can see different shades because every brand uh, have interpreted this, uh, this color in their own way. We can find something super classical like Jill Sander or Max Mara, which is known for these super classical but super fresh lines. But they also have applied in, in a sporty way like Todd's or in a sexy way. Uh, with like Roberto Cavalli by Fausto Puglisi, which is yellow usually is not an easy color. It's, it's a color that usually has have been used in a small part, in small percentage. But in this case, also to highlight this happiness, this new happiness of living life have been applied in total for, for total looks, for, for total outfits. The same thing happened with orange. Um, working with trends, I remember that I found this orange also uh, during the previous collections, but it was in small pieces. It was used in very small percentage. In this case, for the spring summer 2022, it has been used in a very massive way from different brands according to their own different styles. You can see if something um, urban sexy like uh, Christian Siriano, or you can see maybe in a, in a more classical way used by uh, Maria Grazia Curie for Christian Dior, or New Prada and uh, Raf Simons that are actually working together to develop Prada's collection have used orange to reinterpret the, the classical um little dress by by Prada so as you can see let me, okay um so as you can see actually it kind of have been used for in different ways but the result the what what is beautiful about this is that the result is different for for every designers we have something super 80s like um, Saint Laurent, we also have something classical, but not too much like uh, Max Mara and more. Okay, another unusual color found uh, during this spring summer 2022 collection have been uh, the, the total black. Demna Vasalia, which is the head designer of Balenciaga, developed the entire collection in black. Um, if you want to take a look maybe later or, or in another time, you will see that he uh, developed an entire collection in black. It was the main color. Some of, uh, I, I have the chance to, to, to read some reviews of these collections and uh, the, this massive use of black have been related also to um, this post-pandemic period, uh, some of, of the designers have expressed this new um, happiness 
with super solid color and happy shades. But there are there have been many others who are still um, working on the grief, on the sense of grief related to the pandemic. So these massive use of black have been connected also to, to this specification, to, to this reason. So as you can see also here, every designer obviously uh, had the chance to, uh, to work with this color in their own um, personal way. We can see Alaya, which have been just um, reassigned to a new designer. We can also see Chanel, which is, which is known for a super colored tire. In this case, they have reinterpreted the, the classical tire transformed in a, in a dress in, in black vinyl or, or black similar vinyl uh, material. So let's go on with another, another topic. So we have took a look at the main colors and the main shades found on runways. And now let's talk about the main trends that I have found on runway. First of all, let me say this, um, fashion is cyclical. We have a throwback to the 80s. We also had throwback of the 90s. And now it is time to have a throwback to the Y2K, which is the year 2000. Um, a lot of designers have expressed this nostalgia feeling of the early 2000s. And they have expressed it in their own way. The most seen nostalgic uh, trends here on runway have been this one, the super low waves. We know that the early 2000s were characterized by these super low waves. I remember seeing all these pop stars uh, on red carpet wearing these super low waist jeans. We are also, um, we, we were used to super high jeans. We were super used to super high waist uh, trousers. But since fashion is cyclical, uh, we just have to restart from another point. Okay, there's a message in the chat. Yeah, right. You're totally right. It was, um, it was a trend. I, I remember that I, I was too high, I was in high school maybe, or, or maybe I was even younger. And I remember these uh, super low waist jeans with super high belts, or always with the logo, just like we can see it in Dolce Gabbana or Blue Marine. I remember these super heavy belts with, uh, yes, with these um, accessories, with these metal accessories that actually were not that beautiful. <laughs> but then, okay, we will, I'm sure that we will receive them in, uh, in shops and also on, on, the, on the social media because this nostalgia of the year 2000 has been very, very, uh, has spoken very loudly during the, the latest collections. So one of the main trends of this nostalgia have been these super low waves. So get used to it because we are going to see them uh, all over the, the magazines. We are going to see them all over with the bell, like the men because it's very sexy. Yes, definitely, yes. Yes, also because these asymmetrical um, cuts of the, of the trousers, these this way uh, kind of looks very sexy, very innovative also because it is, yes, a super low waist, but it also has um, something new related to, to, to all the others. Okay, so let's go on with the other, another trend found on runways. Since due to, to this pandemic period that we all have been through, we had the chance to develop many, um, many skills. I learned how to bake, 
uh, I also learned how to, I tried to, to learn how to make crochet. So uh, this way to, um, this new way to connect with, uh, with handmade, this new refound happiness on, on doing something by hand have been reinterpreted by the different designers also. So you can see a uh, handmade crochet by like this one made by Alberta Ferretti. We can see something that is, has been already seen again, all over, all over and all over uh, on the web and also uh, on collections, which is this granny knit uh, crochet uh, shapes, which I have been re-proposed by Chloe which is directed by Gabriela Herz, which is um, a designer who is pretty close to sustainability um, curiosity. She, uh, she tried, she, she did it actually. Um, she used the, the old leather from unsold, unsold bags to make the new bags for the new collection. So uh, in order to not waste and not use new leather, but using something already existed. So Gabriella Hers is pretty close to the sustainability, to the handmade and traditional cause. In fact, another, another brand that uh, highlighted this new traditional way to, uh, to create new garments is being Gabriela Herst, um, and I made some research, and she uh, she is uh, she she's grow she, she was born and she grew in uh, Uruguay, and that's why she made uh, all these um, Uruguayan um, shapes of um, of these clothes, and these are made by um, artisans. These are handmade by artisans in uh, Uruguay. And um, so also this, um, this, new, this traditional way of working, uh, of working wool and of knitting have been uh, translated in this kind of garments. The same thing happened with Missoni because you can see that uh, these are a lot of the historical Missoni pattern pieces and they just uh, got them together and then, then they just put them together and created new shapes and created new patterns using already existing patterns. A pattern? <laughs> yes, even to me too. I think it is something a little bit too hippie for me to, yes, definitely. Maybe some pieces taken uh one at the time but yes definitely i i totally agree with you it is something too too hippie to me but uh i think that this trend will be um we got famous i mean this is a trend that is already existing by two or three seasons and it is something that people are going to uh people are going to love it trust me but then, yes, I would definitely wear this Alberta Ferretti top, which is, I think it's, it's amazing, also because it is totally handmade. And, but yes, all the rest, I think it is too much for me too. Okay, another, um, another factor of this uh, nostalgia of the early 2000s are being the smooth fabrics. Um, also because of this shape that kind of remind us of the early 2000s. Uh, designers have, um, they use this, uh, the, they use this, uh, this kind of fabric in a pretty massive way. We can see smooth fabrics, um, a lot of time um, mix it with, um, with other fabrics, with um, super matte fabrics. Uh, to combine together also to highlight the light of, of, the, of the shimmer of these smooth fabrics. So another way, uh, another fabric that we will find obviously during the, 
the future and the next seasons will be definitely these smooth fabrics. Obviously, also here you can see that all the designers have interpreted these super smooth fabric in their own way. We have Maria Grazia Fiori from Dior who took the box uniform and created something very trendy, something very uh, unex uh, unexpected, yes. But then on the other side, we can see Silvia Venturini Fendi and uh, Kim Jones working on, on, on a new way of wearing smooth fabrics. Need that Bottega Veneta with shoes is beautiful. Fendi is brilliant. Yes, I think that Fendi uh, have been. I don't know how. Um, I don't know how to say it, but I think that Kim Jones and Silvia Venturini Fendi are doing an amazing job. Uh, mine is an unpopular uh, opinion because I I read a lot of people tell telling that they didn't like it, but that maybe um, Silvia Venturini Fendi was better alone. But yes, we have to remind that uh, she used to work with Karl Lagerfeld and unfortunately Karl Lagerfeld is not with us anymore. So she had to also to, um, to stay updated with the new generations. And I think that the best way to do it is with um, Kim Jones which is also the designer of the Dior men uh, line. Okay then, um, uh, curiosity for your information. Uh, Kim Jones from Fendi has already developed a, new, uh, a collection with Kim Kardashian West for, um, for Skims, her clothing line. So the Skims per Fendi collection has just dropped it. And I think it's another way to connect the masses. So uh, the street style with uh, a high fashion house like Fendi, because maybe uh, a lot of time Fendi has been associated with something pretty old. But I think that with this new drop collection, uh, all also the Gen Z uh, will be enclosed to, to the Fendi world. It was, this is, was just, uh, something that I read about uh, on the on the past days. Okay, so let's see the the last trend that I have seen on on runway, uh, which is this see through uh, trend. So also do uh, this pandemic period that we have been through. Uh, I think that a lot of people want to be seen, wants to re-express their selves. And I think that one of the best way to do it is to literally show their body. So uh, um, this see-through effect of, of, of the clothes, I think that these have been the way that designer wants to, uh, to express this new concept. As you can see, obviously, obviously here, every designer has the chance to express their own style and their own self um, according their own style. So we can see something pretty minimal, but um, yes, something minimal from uh, Numero 21 by Alessandro Dell'Acqua. We also can see something classical by Balmain. Uh, Balmain this year celebrated 10 years of the creative direction of Olivier Rustain, which is um, the head designer of, of the Maison. And this was one of the most classical uh, model created by him. So they reproposed it. Uh, during the last fashion show, they reproposed some of the classical models created by Olivier. And then, okay, here, as you can see, this is pretty um, explicit. We, we want to show our body to, to the masses, to the other people, and there is no better way to do it than wearing transparent layers. So basically, these were the main trends that I have found on runway. But as we also, uh, as we all know, um, 
what is uh, the most the, the most sold pieces of, of an entire collection are accessories. So uh, I'm gonna show you a quick overview of the um, trendy shoes of the most trendy shoes and bags of the season. Because um, I, I don't know if if, uh, if you know that, but the ninety percentage ninety percent of the entire uh, sales of, of a fashion brand are accessories. So only 10% are made by garments, but the 90% of the earning are made by accessories. So here are uh, the most, the, yes, the, the most trendy uh, shoes of the, of, the, of the season, so yeah, of the season. Um, you can see Balmain, uh, Olivier Rosteng created a brand new model of sandals for Balmain. Jonathan Anders, J.W. Anderson, which is the head designer of Loeb, uh, created uh, a, new, um, a new model of sandals with all different heels. Later, I will show you some other pictures. In this case, we have a broken egg, but there are also uh, heels made by highlighter, by soap, by nail polish. So he created these funny uh, new models of shoes with these unique heels. Donatella Versace uh, re, uh, redesigned uh, the super uh, platform heels that she created for this season and transformed it in sandals because uh, this season, one of the most trendy um, shows of the season are these super platform heels from Versace and she created the, the open toe, the, the open version of this one. Some other models that I have found on runway which are going to be uh, must have of the season are obviously boots. Uh, Valentino, which already dropped one of the most wanted shoes of the season, reinterpreted their own biker boots and created a new model. The same thing happened with Christian, with Christian Dior, directed by Maria Grazia Curi. Matthew Williams, which is the new designer of Givenchy, created a brand new street urban style for the brand and these are um, some some of the the i think some of the most uh, wanted shoes of the season and then there's a case which have been uh, the fendace collection um, donatella versace from versace and kim jones from fendi created this totally unexpected unique and never seen before collection together uh, Donatella Versace reinterpreted the, the Fendi classicals and at the same time Kim Jones reinterpreted the Versace classicals and they developed one of the most chatted collection of the entire season. It kind of happened the same uh, with Gucci and Balenciaga. Uh, Alessandro Michele from Gucci and Demna Gvasalia from Balenciaga uh, worked together and developed together a, a brand new collection um, with, um, with the most iconic uh, graphics reinterpreted and combined together. If you haven't watched it, uh, I'm suggesting you to, to take a look. And the same thing did Donatella Versace and Kim Jones. Uh, these are other uh, trending shoes of the next season. Obviously, uh, there are the ugly shoes, the ugly sneakers, uh, which have been one uh, an important uh, trend of, of also of the of the last seasons. And Versace did the same thing, uh, just like I told you before, with the sandals. They they did the same things with mules. And now we are talking about the trending bags found on runways. Nicolas Gesquier, which is the designer of Louis Vuitton, took 
the, um, the speedy model. Are we doomed with shoes? <laughs> Nicolas Gesquier took, um, so the, the, the iconic speedy model from Louis Vuitton and created a new version of it. So uh, the shape kind of is the same, but it kind of um, enriches and, and transform it in something even more unique. Jonathan Anderson from Loeb uh, decided to drop a brand new uh, it bag. And trust me, I have already seen this bag on many influencers and also on uh, their um, Instagram profile. So I think this will be one of the it bag of the season. And this is another example of the Fendace collaboration. As you can see, the base model, uh, the underlying model is a, um, a baguette from Fendi, which is the, mo the, the iconic uh, model developed by Karl Lagerfeld during the 80s. And, but inside of it, we can find some Versace, some Versace pins. We can also find uh, a monogram um, combined from, um, yeah, a monogram created with the Fendi F and uh, the monogram typical of Versace. So as you can see also here, we can find two different brands that are working actually together and created something totally unique. Um, uh, we are saved by the person thing. <laughs> And then um, Pier Paolo Piccioli, which is the, the head designer of Valentino, um, have developed his uh, Rockstar collection, um, developing new models of, um, of bags, like the Roman Stud collection, which is characterized by these super macro uh, studs. And he developed another uh, new model, of this trendy bag. And I think that uh, this will be one of the it bag of the season because um, their brand ambassador Zendaya already wore this uh, during one of her photo shoots. And then last but not least, uh, we have the final part of, of the trending bags of the season. And we can see, um, a classical model like the bowling bag uh, reinterpreted by Maria Grazia Curie from Christian Dior, who um, applied this super solid color into a super classical model, which is the, the bowling bag. Uh, we, we can see the same thing at Chanel, like I told you before, uh, the main classical model um, did not change, the only accessories that have been changed inside uh, inside this model has been the, the chain, who is a, um, a macro a macro chain instead of a medium one. And also, uh, this last one is um, the new drop of Burberry of the Burberry House, uh, which is characterized by the monogram uh, created by Riccardo Fischi, which is actually the head designer of. Um, of Burberry. So basically this was, uh, let's say, um, an overview, a general overview of the of this next season. Uh, I have just told you um, not of the colors. I mean, it was just a general overview. Uh, I can be even more detailed if you want to, but this was just my tips, these were just my tips to, uh, to face this, uh, this new season and to, be, to not be unprepared when, when we got to, to the season. So if you want to, I am here for, uh, for any questions. Um, if you want to ask me something, if you are curious to know something more, about the trend world. If you have any typology of question, I'm here.
Okay, so what are the must-have items we should have in our wardrobe and how can we wear them in 2022? Okay, so the must-have uh, items that we should wear, we should have in our wardrobe are, are actually some of the ones that I listed to you. Um, be sure, this is my personal advice, be sure to have uh, some of the colors that I have mentioned to you because I'm pretty sure we will see them all around the magazines, all around the social medias, especially for um, yellow and orange colors. So be sure to, to do that. And well, how you can wear them? But that's, that's a pretty tough question. I mean, uh, I can, first of all, I can help you doing that because I can, um, I can help you maybe uh, understand which, your, which is your, um, your perfect style. The, uh, I can help you also to, to understand how to combine your, uh, your garments inside your wardrobe because a lot of people, a lot of clients uh, sometimes uh, ask me, they, they tell me, oh, no, I don't have, uh, do you also do corporate styling? Yes. Um, in fact, I was saying that a lot of uh, clients, a lot of time ask me, uh, tell me, oh, no, I don't have uh, um, em enough items in my wardrobe. What can I do? But the secret is that 90% of the time, people already have what they need in their wardrobe but they just have to learn and understand how to combine them to create multiple looks, multiple outfits. My mantra is usually to buy better and buy less. But yes, I can also help you doing your corporate styling sessions. Um, I had the chance to develop also um, styling uniform for, for different corporates that I have the chance to work with, yes. You totally, yes. Yes, I think that uh, we should all learn to buy less, but buy better. We should, have, we should start to give to, to the items a value, a worth, and not just a price. Uh, in my wardrobe, I have, I don't have uh, such a big wardrobe. I have a small one, but it kind of has the right items inside. So I have the chance to combine and to create infinite, an infinite uh, number of different outfits. Oh, there's another question. I have an event coming up. Will you be able to style me? Yes, totally. Uh, I usually do it both online and in-person sessions when I help my clients uh, most of the times with uh, already uh, existing garments, but um, I can also organize a shopping, a private shopping session with, uh, with all of you, and we can select together uh, what is best for you. And maybe I can help you with some styling tips that are usually um, so precious and people um, love the way uh, they, they, they actually look like after uh, a small styling session because you just have to learn to style your light you just have to um, to understand your worth and then it's made it's done uh okay what can you say about the trend toward makeup are we going to earn more than to the season as well? with big cat eyes and clean made shades okay uh makeup is pretty much like fashion, it is cyclical. Um, we have been through um, super market uh, highbrows, then we passed to super, uh, we, we started with super thin eyebrows, then we stepped to uh, super highlighted eyebrows, and now we are also uh, passing through another uh, step of the, of the makeup. I think that makeup, um, is going to develop like, like fashion. And it kind of follows fashion through uh, the, the trends. So I think that 
one of the main trends that we will also see in makeup is this nostalgia of the early 2000s. Um, if you take a look also at influencers or uh, fashion models or Instagram models, you can see that they are already adopting this, uh, this new way of, this new old way of doing makeup. Uh, I think that uh, the, the era of um, super highlighted contouring, like the one created by, uh, by, by the Mario, the makeup artist of the Kardashian family, it's, it's something that has been already passed. And we are going back to something a little bit more natural, a little bit more inspired by the early 2000s. I hope that I have answered to your question. So let's see if there's another, if we have another question or. Or not, oh, I read another question that I didn't answer before. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you all for very exciting webinar, loved it. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. I am so sorry we got bothered from, from my dog for, for a moment, but she, she's, she's like this. <laughs> okay, so then uh, let me interrupt my, my screen sharing. Oh, we learned a lot. Thank you, thank you. I hope you enjoy this, uh, this experience with me. I hope you enjoy this webinar as much as I did. It's been a truly pleasure. I am so glad that you all uh, liked uh, the webinar. And so feel free to, to contact me for, for every need. I'm here and have a nice evening or nice afternoon in the, it depends on uh, on your time zones oh grazie mille caro molto interessante prego thank you for for joining me thank you for trusting me for for this experience and i really hope to to find you uh, for another exciting webinar uh, about fashion about the fashion world